We've already discussed customer enrichment, but now let's have a look at a use case that ties everything together really nicely. So customer enrichment actually exposes an API endpoint that can receive form data. Form data can include the CSV file itself. And this opens up a new way of integrating with CoreLogix and making use of custom enrichment. One of the pieces of feedback we've received over the years is that the CSV file is sometimes out of date and needs to be updated manually. And so what we've done is we've exposed this API endpoint so automation can be built. Secondly, people often don't like manually working with CSVs. So here's an example of a Lambda function. Now if I, if I go to the Lambda function here, we can see some details. We can see that what it does is it speaks to the CoreLogix web API. Um, it uses the custom enrichment endpoint and speaks to a specific custom enrichment ID that we've created prior to running this Lambda function. Then what it does is it takes a JSON document like this, which is much easier to work with than a CSV file. And it, you can paste in your, than a raw CSV file, of course. Um, then you can paste in your details, user agent is known, impact score, should alert, so on. And then it can be generated. So what, what, what this function will actually do, if I run the function, is it will actually generate a CSV file from the data. So we can see here that we have a CSV file that is generated. And this, this CSV file is then posted at the CoreLogix endpoint, actually uses the put command because it's an update. Um, and we can see in the body, the body is actually uh, using the form data uh, object that's available uh, as part of the node uh, core feature set. And we create a read stream because we write the CSV file to a path. It has to be form data, you see, this is how it works. Now, what does this mean? Um, what use case does this open up? Well, of course, um, it means that you have um, a constantly up-to-date file for any new logs that come in. But for any logs that have already been ingested, you can do something like this, which I think is really cool. So you can source the logs, enrich them using the new spreadsheet. This will always use the latest version of the uh, enrichment spreadsheet. Um, and it will create a new version. So rather than user, data, user agent enriched, it's user agent enriched live. And we've added a column here for that data. So now you can run reports ad hoc whenever you like on even all the data that's in the archive and, and enrich it with the newest version of your spreadsheet. This means you can get historical analysis of what it would have meant it, with a new bot score. Or for example, if you realize a bot score was wrong, you can go back and reanalyze the data using something like this. So not only are we enriching the data on ingestion, you can enrich the data dynamically, constantly. This is very, very powerful for understanding your security posture, not just when all your automation and everything is working perfectly, but when your data has bugs that you then fix, you can go back and see what's changed. So, so powerful. And I think this is a really nice use case just to show off of how CoreLogix works, not just as an observability solution, but as a repository for all of your information, uh, as a place where you can collect all of your data, slice it and analyze it and visualize it in a hundred different ways. This is so, so powerful. Uh, and it's one of my favorite things about the CoreLogix platform actually, because it means that you can get up-to-date insights of all the data. And this is something that no platform really offers, um, and especially not the way CoreLogix does it, because every time I run this query, which is actually running, by the way, against the archive in seconds, so we're running with 30,000 logs are being enriched in seconds here against an S3 archive, but we're doing it with no additional cost per query, nothing. So you can do this as much as you like. This is unlimited free access to your data with no worries about user costs or anything like that. And if you're interested in our pricing model, you can check the website out. We charge only by gigabyte and uh, ingested and, retain and retained. Um, so yeah, that's just a really simple use case for how you can use automation uh, via AWS Lambda to generate a CSV file and then push it to the CoreLogix endpoint and dynamically update the, um, the enrichment there. So this is, and you can even see in the description there, that it's been generated via a Lambda function. This is how you keep your custom data live with very few overheads. And you can imagine, by the way, this JSON document, we could replace it. We could replace that with the fields in the DynamoDB database that are updated dynamically from an upstream system, for example. There's lots and lots of potential here, and CoreLogix is extremely extensible. This is a really nice illustration, bringing together a few of the different features, enrichment and the CoreLogix APIs, of which, by the way, there are many, many, many different APIs. So if we look at the account management section here, we have some API keys. If we go to the API section here, go to data management, 
there are lots okay and we have data ingestion apis we have data query apis and we have version tags apis there is lots and lots that you can do here so definitely explore further into these apis because it's going to mean that you can extend CoreLogix in more and more creative ways